a 60-year-old man with diabetic nephropathy is started on treatment with empagliflozin. Which of the following effects is most likely to be seen with this new treatment? In order to answer this question, we have to know what empagliflozin is. Empagliflozin is a SGLT2 inhibitor, and we can remember this by looking at the suffix flozin. SGLT2 inhibitors are going to end with the suffix flozin. And a mnemonic that you can use to remember the function of SGLT2 inhibitors are going to be flozin through the urine. SGLT2 is a co-transporter found within the proximal commuter tubules within the kidneys, and its function is going to be to reabsorb sodium and glucose from the lumen into the blood. And if we inhibit SGLT2 with SGLT2 inhibitors, then we're not going to be reabsorbing sodium and glucose. As a result, more sodium and glucose are going to be urinated out. And because we're going to be urinating glucose and not reabsorbing it into the blood, this way we can use it as a diabetic medication to decrease glucose levels within the blood. Now, because this medication is going to inhibit this co-transporter, we're going to have more sodium flowing to the macula densa within the kidneys and macula densa is going to be sensing the sodium levels and it is going to then signal the nearby juxtaglomeral cells on whether it should secrete renin or not. Now, because we have more sodium coming into the macula densa, because we have inhibited this co-transporter, the macula densa is going to signal the juxtaglomeral cells to decrease renin secretion because we already have enough sodium. And remember that renin is converted into angiotensin II and angiotensin II is going to be vasoconstricting the efferent arterioles, which is going to increase the GFR. So if we have lower renin levels, then we're also going to have lower angiotensin II levels and thereby the GFR is going to go down. So the answer to this question is going to be answer choice D, which is going to be reduction in glomerular hypofiltration. Answer choice A is decreased intestinal glucose absorption. This is going to be incorrect. Remember that SGLT1 is going to be the co-transporter that is going to be responsible for glucose absorption within the intestines. Answer choice B is increased body weight. This is also going to be incorrect because SGLT2 inhibitors usually decrease body weight because they decrease glucose levels within the body. And so if we have lower glucose levels within the body, then we're going to have less insulin secretion. And remember that insulin is an anabolic hormone that is going to promote weight gain. So if we have lower insulin levels, then we're going to be decreasing body weight, not increase. And we said that we're going to be decreasing insulin production. So it's not going to be answer choice C, which is increased endogenous insulin production. And answer choice E is suppression of glucagon secretion. This is also incorrect because we are lowering insulin levels by decreasing glucose levels. We're not going to have the inhibition that insulin has on glucagon. As a result, glucagon is not going to be suppressed.